What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5 and this time R6. In this video I'll be focusing on the built-in interval timer, what it can do, what it can't, and how to get it doing its thing. So in the past we've had to rely on an external timer remote like this one, if I get it pointed the right way, Canon's TC80N3. However, with digital cameras and even film cameras that were completely electronically controlled, everything that's necessary to replace that external remote is in the camera. Well, at least in principle. However, for some reason, and I have no idea why, it took Canon almost forever to actually include this simple functionality in their cameras. And even then, it's kind of honestly a bit of a buggy mess. So let's dive right into setting up the interval timer. You'll find it on the Shoot 6 menu page when you've got your camera in still photography mode. Selecting the interval timer entry will present you with basically two buttons, enable and disable. When the timer is enabled, you'll also see the configured interval and number of shots, and this will be displayed both in the Shoot 6 menu page uh, on the interval timer listing and in the interval timer submenu. To configure the interval timer, first you have to enable it, and then you can press the info button, which brings up the adjust intervals slash shots screen. Here you can set the interval from between one second and 99 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds, and you can shut, set the number of shots from between zero and 99. When the number of shots is set to zero, the interval timer will run indefinitely, or at least until it's stopped or the camera runs out of power. On the other hand, setting the number of shots to, from between 1 and 99 will result in at least, or at most, that many shots being taken before the timer is stopped automatically. Now, remember in this menu to select OK to save your changes and settings and exit back to out of the detailed settings menu. If you just hit menu, it's a sec it, it won't save your changes, it'll just skip you back out up a level. To start the timer, you simply have to take a picture. To stop the timer, you have a couple of options. First, you can power cycle the camera, as turning the camera off via the power switch disables the interval timer, or you can go through the menus and select disable from the interval timer menu itself. Setting up and starting the timer is pretty easy, but there are some things to be aware of when using the interval timer. So to start with, you can shoot manually in between the interval shots by pressing the shutter release at any time, or almost any time. However, about five seconds before the next scheduled shot is to be made, the camera will take control over the shutter release in preparation for shooting the next interval. Second, if you have autofocus set uh, or autofocus start set on the shutter button half press and the lens is in autofocus mode, the interval timer will trigger the autofocus system before shooting. Moreover, if focus cannot be achieved, the camera will not release the shutter and will not make the scheduled image. Now you can disable this behavior by either switching your lens into manual focus or by using back button focusing. Now, personally, my recommendation is not to allow the camera to refocus between shots on the interval timer. In my experience, it's best to focus at the start of your interval shooting session and then lock the focus for the entire sequence. Third, if auto power off is enabled, the auto power off time is reduced to eight seconds. If eco mode is set, the screen will dim after two seconds and the camera will auto power off six seconds later for a total of eight seconds. That said, do expect some rather bizarre power management behavior with the interval timer. To start with, for intervals, intervals longer than one minute or so, the interval timer will power the camera back up one minute before the next scheduled shot. However, the camera will then auto power off eight seconds later thanks to that at auto power off interval. And then, some 50 seconds after that, it will turn on again to make the exposure. So, a completely useless power cycle that exists for no apparent reason. In a similar vein, when auto power off is enabled, the camera is supposed to power down in 8 seconds. 
And this works as designed when the interval timer is operating alone, basically for single shot. However, if you have any of the multi-shot operations, such as auto exposure bracketing enabled, then the short power out or power down timeout doesn't seem to work. Fourth, the manual claims that the interval timer can be used with bracketing, multiple exposure mode, and HDR mode. However, if these are enabled, the interval timer will not automatically shoot the entire multi-shot sequence at each interval. At least I can't get mine to do it in my testing. Finally, if the shutter speed needed for any given exposure exceeds the interval period, the camera will skip the frames that were scheduled to be made while the shutter was open, but will still decrement the interval count. So if you have, for example, a 30 second exposure and 10 second intervals, the camera will skip three out of every four frames, but the camera will count it as having shot four frames. Which brings me real to the real crux of the matter or problems here with the interval timer. So to start with, and this is maybe a bit of a minor gripe, the interface for the interval timer is clunky at best. You have to jump through hoops with the info button to set the interval and count instead of just having everything all on one menu page. Then there's the 99 frame limit, which too is utterly bizarre to me. I can kind of understand why the TC80N3 might have such a limit, because it does, but even using the barest minimum of memory that you can have in a camera or computer, one byte, would support shooting 256 frames, and there's clearly a lot more memory in the R5 and R6 than that. Just doubling the frame or the memory available to 16 bits or 2 bytes would support 65,535 exposures, and that would be more than 36 hours of shooting at 1 second intervals. So on top of that, the interval timer lacks useful functionality like the ability to set a start time or start timer, or for that matter, the ability to set an end time either. Then there's the utterly bizarre power off behavior. Now, clearly Canon ported the code from their DSLRs. However, it doesn't seem like a whole lot of thought was put into what might need to be changed on a mirrorless. So on a DSLR like the 5D Mark IV, the minimum auto power off timeout is one minute, and there's no need to rapidly sleep the camera to save power like there is on a mirrorless. So waking the camera up a minute before shooting really isn't a big deal, and the camera would still be awake at the release time anyway. However, with a mirrorless camera, they added that eight second power down timer, which of course makes sense in a mirrorless context, but they also didn't remove that one minute pre-shot power up. So the camera wakes up unnecessarily, then goes to sleep, then wakes back up just before the shot. And at a minimum, that's a completely unnecessary waste of power that just doesn't need to be there. Beyond that, the eight second auto power off just doesn't seem like it's that reliable either. If the interval is paired with any multi-shot operation, or at least ones that I've tested being auto exposure bracketing and multiple exposure mode, the camera appears to just ignore the shortened power down time completely. What's so bizarre about this whole situation to me is that the firmware was clearly updated for mirrorless, or updated with mirrorless in mind. So it detects the interval timer is active, it detects that auto power off is set, and makes some changes. But simultaneously, the firmware wasn't updated to, say, remove the superfluous power cycle. On top of all that, while Canon says the interval timer can be combined with multiple exposure shooting options, such as, again, bracketing or multiple exposure mode or HDR mode, it just doesn't work right. What you'd expect, or at least what I'd expect, is for the camera to shoot the entire multi-shot sequence at each interval. So if you're bracketing, every interval you get your three-frame bracket. Instead, what happens is the camera shoots one frame, and then what it actually does kind of depends on what mode you're in. So if you're using auto exposure bracketing, after the first frame is made, the camera just moves on to the next interval as nothing out of the ordinary happened, and it starts all over again. For multiple exposure mode, the camera will shoot all of the exposures that are combined into the multiple exposure image, However, it does that one exposure for each interval. So if you don't have enough intervals, 
it won't even complete the entire multiple exposure shot either. So in short, the interval timer on the R5 is really only available for basic one frame interval shooting. And even then it really needs to be overhauled to have a more intelligent or usable interface and to work properly with the power management. So to wrap this all up, I'm of the opinion that it's a good thing to have an interval, interval timer built into the firmware. That said, the one in the R5 desperately needs to be completely rewritten with a new UI, proper integration with the camera's power management, and proper operation with multiple exposure shooting modes before it's worth taking seriously. As it stands, the basic functionality is there, but it really is only usable if you need one shot and one shot only at each interval. Additionally, unlike the TC80N3, the interval timer can't be combined with the bulb timer or a programmable self timer, so it's limited that way too. For me at least, the built-in interval timer is basically there for in those situations where I have to use something in a pinch, but I only use it if I absolutely have to, and I vastly prefer using my external TC80N3 instead button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you aren't already. Remember, you can't forget to unsubscribe later if you don't subscribe now. Finally, if you know someone that might find this useful, uh, help them out and share it with them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.